Masters and honored guests. I don't know about you all, but shopping for a new car or the process of buying a new car is not my favorite thing to do. And after I bought my last car, which was out there, parked out there at the Camry, I promised myself the next time I buy a new car, it's going to be done differently, dramatically differently than I did the last couple of times I bought a new car. So I want to introduce you, if you don't know about it already, to Auto Tempest. Auto Tempest is a website which incorporates other car search websites such as cars.com, Auto Trader eBay, and other car search sites. And it's real versatile in that you can pick out the year of the car you want, the mileage range that you're looking for, and of course the make and the model of the car that you want. So it's real versatile in that area. The latest car that I have now, the new car that I bought recently, I use Auto Tempest to start my search. And the amount of, the amount of time it ended up being between the time I started my search and the time I picked up the car was five days. So I went on the site. I had a few ideas of which type of car I wanted to get. And I did a search. I had a price range also that you can pick out on the search engine part of it. I found cars, of course, in Mobile and then in the surrounding areas, and I went 300 miles, a 300 mile radius from here. 
and I found the make and model car that I wanted, and I was surprised. I found a 2018 with only 9,700 miles on it, and there were other cars that were a little older, but there were $1,000 more or $2,000 more of the same make and model of car that I was looking for. Well, I found that and I looked at the details and it also shows you the Carfax and the Auto Check or whatever the other website is to, to give you a record of the car. And it had been an accident, a front end accident, but it was repaired and repainted. And the car that I ended up getting was located in Pelham, Alabama. And sometimes you do have to travel to get the deal, because if, if you stick with your local area, you may not get the best deals that you, that you may want. So as opposed to the last couple times I bought a car, where I went about buying a car in a desultory way, desultory way, excuse me, this time, I had a better game plan through using Auto Tempest. So that Tuesday, I went up with a friend in my old car to go pick up the new car. I still had some apprehensions because I, I, I knew the price, I knew the asking price, but I was wondering about the about the fees that was going to be slapped on there. And it ended up, it wasn't really that bad. And I didn't really have to do much wheeling and dealing at this dealership because that price that I saw was a fixed price. And I didn't pay that much more in fees nor in taxes. So the next time you search for a car, you may consider going to autotempest.com to search, you know, as opposed to shopping at the dealership or anything like that. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Marcus. That was, uh, was very valuable information. I appreciate that. Um, especially since my own personal car buying experiences have been very docile to worry. So that spoke directly to me. Um, that sounds like something that, you know, like I said, it, I think we've all dealt with at some point. We've tried to buy a car and it's way more complicated than it should be. So that is an excellent solution for that problem. Um, let's see. All right. So now, with the end of our prepared speeches, uh, we will now transition over to the table topics portion of our meeting. And I would like to uh, call up our table topics master to the uh, lecture. You said what name would you choose? What name would you choose to be your alias? A alias, okay, if I lift off the grid. You live off the grid. Wow. <laughs> Never thought of that. Very <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I uh, <laughs> Oddly enough, I was this sort of crossed my mind today. <laughs> not, not really, but there's this there's this guy uh, that we're working with 
that's helping us with the design. And his name is, oh, what is his name? I forget. Okay, well, anyways, his, his last name, his name's like Tommy Friday or something. His last name's Friday. So I was like, well, what if my name was like Sean Saturday? Or <laughs> I always wondered these people that have like a day as their last name. I think that's pretty cool. You know, there's like a football player named Jeff Saturday, I think, and then there's, you know, Sunday. you got Billy Sunday or, or some guy. Or <laughs> can't think anybody else, but uh, that would be my alias, Sean Saturday. No. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> the second one is okay. The the three ones that I've thought of is live, laugh, love. Which one would you choose to live up to? Um, 
So, would you rather watch baseball or softball? Why? If not, what sport do you like to watch if you do watch it? Fellow Toastmasters, our guest. The question that was posed to me is what sport would I rather watch? Baseball or softball, or if it's neither, what sport would I rather watch? Just to give you a little story, when I was growing up, <clears throat> baseball was my favorite sport. I played organized baseball more than I played any organized sport. I think I only played one year of organized football growing up, one year of organized basketball growing up, three years of organized bowling, but I did more years of organized baseball than I did any other sport. But today, I hardly watch either baseball or softball. I will almost never watch baseball. I, watch I may watch some highlights today on YouTube if it's interesting enough. But my one of my favorite sports to watch today is tennis, especially during the majors. Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and U.S. Open, and then some of the minor tournaments also. So that is my favorite sport to watch today, or one of my favorite sports to watch today is tennis, Mr. Collins Master. Thank you. Thank you. The first one is a hand have five fingers. What is your five finger idea of creating a outline for speech? Thank you. Well, that was a good one because that's Toastmasters. Okay. How are we on time? Um, I think it's. Let me look at you. Yeah, just a couple, yeah, a couple more, about four more minutes. All right. Okay. I'll give you two more minutes and finish. Okay. Next one would be, what point of the day when you are discriminatory of being out of it? <laughs> Go to 
school's masters. To me, it's always the end of the day. Because I'm a morning person. My wife and my kids hate me because I'm military. So I'm used to getting up early, getting things started, getting things going. Now the afternoon I'm white, ready to go to bed early and start over again. My wife and kids, you know, they'd rather lay in bed, go to the phone, do other things. But I'm up, I'm up ready to go. I don't want to waste time, I want to get things done, get them more quick, then relax in the afternoon. So for me, by the afternoon, I'm done. By that time I want to wind down, you know, I like to go walk the dog, watch a little bit of news, you know, surf the web for a few minutes, maybe see what the latest sports course there is. Because for me, I like watching softball. You know why? I love looking at those girls in those softball pants. Oh, That's why I like softball. <laughs> I don't like looking at the men, but the women, they go on some good softball pants. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank you, and I believe we have time for one another. Okay. What type of gravitas would you face if you break? of your morals. And by the way, gravitas means means seriousness or dignity. Topics Master for some very thought-provoking questions. Um, I think each and every one of those questions was a good opportunity to kind of get to know each other and kind of figure out what we think. Um, that's probably my favorite part about Table Topics is you get to you get to get those little those off-the-cuff details. Yeah, are usually uh, a better example of who you are than a prepared speech. In my opinion. Um, I like the name Sean Saturday. I feel like that could be like a pirate radio <laughs> host. Like there's this one channel that no one knows about and only plays like uh, The Clash and stuff like that and Sean Saturday's the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, um, all right. So we just went to the topics. I thought that was really good. And you said four or five days you were done from start to finish? Yes. That was really good. Uh, the table topics portion, Donovan, you're, you're such a pro at that. And I guess you had those questions already with you, huh? I did. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And I noticed, I think rock toss was one of our words for the day once. I think. It was. Yeah, I think so. That's why I did that one in the story because this, this notary is actually the most basic thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. uh -huh. When we did the table topics, Sean, you came up with. Uh, the areas that was your, your question, 
and he said I was just thinking about this today. And I promise you that was the funniest thing in the world because you look like you were making us so crazy. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just but I was like, oh yes, you were. You were thinking about this. <laughs> so I thought that was so cute. And when cute in a masculine way, now don't let me bitch. <laughs> I thought that was nice. And then when you were saying about being a DJ, I was thinking about some kind of commentary, like Sean, you bring to the stage, Sean, you know, Saturday, and you know, you be whatever commentary. So that's what I was thinking about. Uh, live, laugh, and love, Cheyenne. I, I didn't want to answer that because I was thinking, uh, no, hey, I cannot choose between the three. But when you said laugh, that was so true because laughing, I think, increases your life. Um, Sad people just don't seem to live as long as happy people do. And then you don't often laugh around people that you don't love. So you're usually engaging with your loved ones, increasing your life. So absolutely. Once you made a plan, I will always choose laughter. So thank you for that. And to wrap things up, I think all of the table topics were very nice. Sean, I, I would have never taken that five finger. I mean, if I, I never would have tried that. So you did a awesome, awesome job, and I loved your ending. You know, like, hey, wait a minute, all right, I got four. That's all you need. So it's not going to change your question. What's the four thing? <laughs> there is no five. I told you. Anyway, and you do learn a lot about a lot of people. Maurice, how many? What sports did you not play? I guess that should be more than the question because it's not just I played them all. I was like, God, I never would have played that. Hell, I never would imagine that you said that you want to become more empathetic. I would think that you were just, you know, oozing empathy. And, so, and then military man, that's something that we didn't know about Mr. O'Brien. And uh, so you just learned a lot. I'm going to turn this portion over to the speech evaluation and then I'll come back up and get the reports from all our report papers. which was titled Auto Tempest. And uh, I'll go ahead and start out with the, the pros. I really like that you didn't use notes. So you kind of just came up here and you were really able to demonstrate your speaking ability without having to refer to notes. And, and that was great. Um, also the subject itself, Auto Tempest, I think is applicable to everybody and it's something that could really help everybody out. Buying a car is a major decision and anything that could make it easier or more beneficial is, is always going to be better. I think that something that you could work on is maybe um, having better eye contact and really uh, connecting with everybody across the room. But besides that, um, there wasn't a whole lot. You, you were really good up here and uh, it was also good that you talked about your personal experience with it so that we knew that that you were um, credible about this this topic and that it wasn't just something you read about and um, yeah like I said it's it, it was just a good topic buying a car is a, a really major decision and I knew somebody actually that, that needed to buy a car like really quickly because something had happened to theirs and I think that if they had known about something like Auto Tempest, it would have really um, helped them out a lot. And, and you had said something like uh, you, you have ex access to Carfax on it and I just thought like really because I remember um, in the past I always had to buy that stuff, and it can cost, if you're looking at a lot of cars, it can end up costing a lot, so I'll definitely look into that personally, because I think that could be really helpful. All in all, I think it was good, and I look forward to hearing you speak again.
Depends. On, well, you, we have 13 minutes left in the meeting, so maybe two, two to five minutes is fine. I mean, okay. the, I mean, you do it as long as you want. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll, there's there's no minimum time. Okay. Like I said, I'll try to I'll try to be uh, short and concise with it. But this popped into my head earlier when um, the question of morals popped up. So, um, next to a question, by the way, and next to an answer. 
Um, but one of the things that we, um, one of the things that I was reading about recently that's fascinating me is um, in uh, basically in uh, social psychology and personality psychology, we have a thing that some of you may be aware of, some may not be aware of, but it's known as the dark triad, which is um, personality traits that people tend to have that are either um, kind of dark, you know, kind of negative, or not necessarily the best. However, everyone has these traits that exist in some way, shape, or form. And those three particular traits are psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. And the short and sweet definition of each one of those is that, you know, um, you know, psychopathy, as we know, is just, you know, lack of care for others. And then um, narcissism is overinflated self-worth. And then you have Machiavellianism, which is named after Machiavelli's, you know, the prince, which is the, um, which is basically using people as a, you know, means to an end, um, rather than end in itself. Um, which is all, you know, very negative and, you know, just a kind of a dark way of looking at humanity and, um, you know, the way you judge individuals. However, recently something new has come out. Uh, by the uh, social psychologist Dr. Scott Barry Kaufman, where he recently talks about the light triad traits, and he's done tests to prove that these light triad traits do exist in contrast to the dark triad traits. The light triad traits are, uh, <clears throat> let me see if I can remember them all, it's uh, humanism versus um, you know, psychopathy. Um, actually, humanism versus narcissism, and then uh, empathy versus psychopathy, and finally, Kantianism versus Machiavellianism, whereas Kantianism being the, uh, the total opposite of that, and that is viewing the person as an end rather than a means. Um, it's very fascinating because it shows that most of us have, I mean, we have all of these traits, you know, if you, if you have, you know, too many dark triad traits, you know, you become this, you know, goblin of a person that no one wants to be around. But then if you have too many light triad traits, you are unable to defend yourself in bad situations. Um, so it's ideal to have a little bit of both of these traits so that you can um, basically navigate multiple situations, be a well-rounded person, and you just don't want to be leaning one way or the other. But it's nice to know that these positive traits do exist and that it's not just these negative traits. And so uh, there's a study that you guys can, I would encourage everyone to um, go online and try it out. And don't, don't be too worried if you, if you find you have some dark triad traits, we all got them, they exist. You know, it's just part of being a human. But you'll find out which light triad traits you excel in and where you land in that spectrum. You can go to scottberrycoffman.org and you can um, basically take the test for yourself and see where you land. And he does a great job of, on the blog explaining, you know, what these triads are and better than I can because, you know, it's his, his test, his study. Um, and then it can essentially, it'll just, it's just another way to you know, further the study, give them more data, and learn something about yourself in the process. Kind of self-evaluate. Yeah, self-evaluate. So that's what we do here at Toastmasters. You know, not only is this a process of learning how to speak and be more comfortable in front of people, this is also, there's a lot of psychology built into Toastmasters. There's a lot of self-discovery. There's a lot of uh, learning. There's a lot of, you know, being vulnerable and putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And um, so naturally, I think everyone here would be interested. So and with that, I really push the lectern to our acting president, Maurice. All right. Thank you. Okay. There are no awards tonight. Again, as I talked about at the beginning of the meeting, we want to set a goal for everyone at least to finish level one. I mean, if you haven't finished level one already, if you're halfway, so finish at least level one by the end of the year, if not more. But at least at least those four speeches. You, know, you have a icebreaker, then you have evaluation and feedback, which you can repeat again for your third speech. And then the, and it also depends on which path you go to. But the fourth one will be research and presenting. So it's really, the level one is really easy. Just talk about yourself, your icebreaker, and then pick your five to seven minute speech to be evaluated and receive feedback on it. Then you can, you can repeat it if you want to, or you could do another speech based on the feedback that you got from the second speech. And then the researching and presenting 
and you have level one done of your pathways. Well, 738, I don't think there's anything else. We will adjourn the meeting at this time. Hey, real quick for y'all guys, I want to say a couple of things here for Lee. Um, you always wonder why, you know, why do I pay this money? What do I get out of it? So, just like anything else, is whatever you put into it. But for that money you put twice a year into be part of Toastmasters, you know, there's a lot of resources, a lot of good stuff, uh, a lot of things you can look at on the website. Like, uh, like he was talking about, you know, there's, there's resources out there, and you, you, you self evaluate. When I first got into Toastmasters, when you signed up, they mailed you two books. You worked in the two books. One was for leadership, one was for communication. Well, nowadays, everything we do is on the internet, isn't it? You order your cheeseburger online, you order your car online, you know, you get paid online, everything's online. So Toastmasters saw that they needed to shift the way they do things. Because everything's online, everything you do. So that's why they came up with Pathways. So Pathways, it's getting better but it's not where it needs to be, but in order to go through the different steps, it shows all these real cool videos and shows you how to evaluate yourself and shows you how to build up through the different pathways to get to certain levels. And so it's a building block. It's just not just throwing you out there. I mean, they came up with scientific ways of doing this. It's not, you know, that's why you pay the money to be part of Toastmasters. I mean, this thing is international. There's people in Australia doing this right now. There's people in Japan doing this. People in Alaska doing this. So they've got it down to a, an art and a science. But I just want to make sure that you're you know, using all these resources to, to, to help better yourself in the club, because they're out there. So that's why you spend that $45 every six months for Toastmasters. You know? I mean, it's, it's just like, Toastmasters is kind of like a church. It's not really a building, it's the members. So you, you just kind of it's whatever you make of. So I'm just here just to help facilitate that and make sure y'all have the things y'all need and want to, to, to flourish as a club. So if you ever need anything or want anything, you know, just let me know because we need, always need to promote it, but we always want you guys to promote you guys and also bring in other members to help promote what we do. Because, you know, it can only get better. My philosophy has always been, you know, I want to leave it better than what I, what I, where I was started at. So like I said, if you ever need anything or want anything, just let me know. I'm, I'm going to try to come by once a quarter. So there's some other things that I, that I can help y'all guys improve what y'all are doing, but you know, the biggest thing is always, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.